if you know he's been taking care of you, that, that's a different kind of worship. If you know he will, you, you're looking at a promise. But if you know he's done it, you, you, you're thanking him for what he's already done. something let me tell you something every now and then you ought to feel something on the inside father we bless your name we thank you for what you're doing what you've already done we ask that you would have your way in this place speak holy spirit in ways that we cannot and grant that we hear you take control let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight 
Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I want to lift up past the scripture we lifted up previously in Exodus, in the book of Exodus, if you will. And I want to raise this word in Exodus chapter 14. Exodus 14. I'm going to read verse 13 and 14. And then Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. Uh, for the next few moments, I want to talk from the theme of this series, Giving Up is Not an Option. This is for our five. But would you do me a favor before you take your seat? Would you look at someone and point to your lips and just do like this? Shh. That's all I want you to do. I want to talk with this added part. Shush. I have been in the world a long time and I've, I've watched and uh, you know I know people get very easily offended if you do the shush sign don't be silencing me I've, I've, you know people get arrogant don't, don't be telling me to shush and I am rightly so many times because somebody just wants to dominate the dialogue, dominate the conversation, dominate your will and your thoughts. But, you know, if you're running up on a lion, tiger, or bear, and you're making a lot of noise, you'll be grateful if somebody says, shh. <laughs> if the gunman is in the next room and y'all are hiding, you'll be happy if somebody says, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times when the right move is to be quiet. There are times when your best move is to just shush. The same verse in Exodus 14, 14 in the Message Bible says it like this. God will fight the battle for you and you if you would keep your mouth shut. Wait a minute. God will fight the battle for you and you. You keep your mouth shut. You might want to tell yourself to shush. I'm quite sure you've talked yourself out of blessings many times. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of tennis, and uh, Serena Williams is one of my favorites. And in tennis, the umpire controls the rowdy crowd with the renowned phrase of, quiet, please. And you can see Serena there kind of giving you the signal. There are times when you just need to shush. I'm, 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 my, 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 my deacon here, my senior deacons, uh, both are excellent golfers, and Deacon Wilson is one who can take, make a golf ball go up and turn left around the corner and end up on the green. Deacon Wilson, one time I was playing with him at Shinnecostic, he, made, he asked me a question. He said, do you want me to go up over the trees or do you want me to turn the corner? Because either way you want it, I can do it. If I go over the trees, it's going to land on the green. In other words, there's a tree sticking out right here. I'm going to go up above it and drop it, or I will go around it and make the ball turn left. I In golf, when you're on the tee, it's golf etiquette to be quiet. And during golf masters, you'll find umpires, marshals walking around. They hold up paddles in the air and they say, quiet, please. 
The reason they hold up paddles is because the crowds around the greens can be dense with people packed eight, nine, ten deep, and you may not be able to hear somebody holler and shush, so they hold a paddle up, and when you see the paddle go up, whether you see the words or not, you know it's time to shush. Players like Tiger Woods have been known to throw the shush sign on you. And, and even, even President Barack Hussein Obama, our former president, you know, I think this one was because he had just made a great shot and he turned around and people were going to do something and he threw the, yeah, shush sign on you. But, but shush has become so popular and so part of the cultural center as that like stars like Rihanna have even tattooed the word on their finger. So that when they lift their hand up, you get to see the finger telling you what they want you to do. <laughs> they hold it up to their lips and it means shush. I, I, I want to give you this. This is going to bless your socks off. When you realize everyone can't be in your ear, you'll learn how to say shush. Oh, you didn't get that. I, that went over somebody's head. When you realize everybody can't be in your ear, you know how to say shush. I, I'll give it to you as a principle. Get this principle, take it home with you. Don't lose it. I'm dropping dimes on you right now. This is a good one right here. Here it is. Whoever has your ear has your future in their mouth. Whoever has your ear has your future in their mouth. Let me give you another way. If you don't realize what I'm saying, see, there are people who have spoken into people's ears and have caused careers to fail, caused children to give up on their dreams and to stop studying. They've spoken into their ear and told them that they couldn't. And then there have also been people who have said you can when others have said you can't. And because they had the ear of the individual, they were able to turn around that which was spoken into them that was negative. Whoever has your ear has your future in their mouth. Now having your ear doesn't just simply mean that they, you're within earshot. It means that you believe them and you resonate with what they say to your spirit. Be careful who's in your ear. Be careful who's in your ear. You, you know, um, there are a lot of synonyms for shush. You know, you, it, it's, it's shush, it's zip it, keep it to yourself. Uh, I really crass and rude is shut up. Be quiet, hold your peace, chill out, simmer down, take it easy, hush. Quiet, silencio, clam up, dummy up, be still. Oh, let's just get back to it. Shush! I know some of y'all are wondering, how does this relate? Let me work with it. This story here that we're looking at tackles all of our worst fears, particularly the fear of the unknown. The children of Israel had left out from the familiar. It may have been slavery, but it was familiar. It may have been forced servitude, but it was familiar. It may not have been a good situation, but it was the one they knew. And dealing with the unknown, whenever the unknown becomes overwhelming, focus on what you know. The unknown was scary to them. They were worried about what's next, what's going to happen next, where, what's going to go on, where, where we go from here, how's this going to turn out. I, I want to help you here. I'm, this, is, this is to walk down somebody's street. When, when, when the unknown becomes overwhelming, focus on what you know. What do you mean, Reverend? Here, here's what they, what they should have known if they didn't know it. They knew that God was speaking because God was with them. 
they, they, they knew that God was a spirit because God's spirit was with them. They knew that the demonstrated manifestation of God was consistently being revealed in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They knew that. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't got this yet. What do you know about your God? What do you know about your God? See, some of you right now know he's a healer because you've been healed. Some of you know he's a way maker because he made a way for you. Some of you know he's a provider because if he hadn't provided, you wouldn't be here right now. Some of you know that he'll fix it because if he hadn't fixed it, you'd be all messed up. Some of you know he'll keep you because you wanted to let go and you almost let go. You were right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. The devil thought he had you, but Jesus came and grabbed you. And he held you close so you wouldn't let go. <laughs> you, you, you see, you have to realize the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable, the unruly, the unacceptable will give impetus for the loss of calm. Whenever you're dealing with the unfamiliar, it doesn't even have to be a bad situation, just unfamiliar. It unnerves you. Driving down a street you ain't never been down before unnerves you. The uncomfortable when you're around people you don't know and you don't know if they like you. It, the unruly when the situation is out of control. The unacceptable when that which has happened is not agreeable to your spirit. It will give you the impetus for the loss of your calm. And uh, I believe, I believe, I could be wrong. I doubt it. I believe that Moses looked at them and thought like this. Restraint needed to be placed on their mouths in order to facilitate the next move of God. Y'all missed that, y'all missed that. Restraint needed to be placed on their mouths. Can I put it like this? They needed a gag order. I don't want you speaking right now. Don't say a thing. Just be quiet. Uh, um, can, can, can you work with me? They were in the midst of a transition. They were leaving out of Egypt, heading to a promised land, the land of their fathers, the land promised to them, the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were going that way, but they were in the midst of a transition. And I want to talk to somebody in transition right now because you have to realize whenever change is happening, whenever a transition is going on, it's not the easiest place to be in. And so you have to realize you can easily get reckless because you're uncomfortable. I know I'm preaching. It's easy when, when transitions are underway for you to get reckless. You, you, don't, you don't get me. Job's wife lost her senses for a moment there. And she said, Job, she said, why don't you just curse God and die? I know this is not cool. I know this is not a good situation. But I want you to understand something about me, baby girl. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't understand what's going on either. But we're not going to get reckless here. Come on, come on. I don't know what's going on with the pandemic. But we're not going to get reckless. Woo. I don't understand this transitional moment, but we're not going to get reckless. I don't know what's going to happen next week, next month, next year, if there'll be a different Delta variant or something come along, but I ain't going to get reckless. Let, let me, let me. See, transitional.
traditional circumstances are never comfortable or as comfortable as permanent placement. Okay, so you can stay in a hotel for a while, but it ain't the same as being in your own house. Are y'all with me? It could be, a, I don't care if it's four seasons. It can be nice. But uh, you can go to your house and there won't be no maid service, no bed down, turn down service, nobody gonna change sheets every day, but there's something about being in your house. It's cute for a minute, especially if you're in Hawaii somewhere. But, but, I, but you still wanna get back. Come on, come on. Y'all gonna preach today, aren't you? Listen, they suffered from a transitional crisis. Because in the moment, they didn't know what was going to happen next. But it wasn't only a transitional crisis, but it was also transitional confusion. Y'all ready to walk with me? They were confused. If God has blessed us to leave, then why has he let the enemy chase us down? And why are they in range to kill us if God is blessing me? Can I help somebody? Many times when you don't understand how God is working the situation out, it's the hardest time of your life. When you look around, you understand what God is doing and it looks like the wicked are prospering and you can't figure out what your next move is. It's the hardest part of your life, but you got to know it's the darkest hour just before the dawning of the day and that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh, I, got, I got a lot more I want to do. I got a lot more. more. Let me, not only transitional confusion, but they were suffering from transitional chatter and cackling. Yeah, they, they were talking. And you know how folk do in the background. Uh, you, you, you do know folk, don't you? <clears throat> they'll, they'll make a plan, and then they'll go back and gossip about whether the plan going to work or not. Everybody agree, and then they'll get back and talk about, I can't believe they're going to do that. Them folk crazy. You know they ain't going to work. Did you see? Did you see the army right there? They, man, we are dead. We're all dead. It's over. It's over. It's over. You see, when you become confused as to where God is in a given situation, it can cause the temporary crisis of faith. Y'all missed it. The result was a temporary crisis of faith. I don't know what God's doing now. Where is God? Churches can't be open. Where is God? We're worshiping virtually. Where is God? Don't know how we're going to make it. Where is God? God said, I'm right here in the midst taking care of you. What, what did you just say? God will take care of. Okay, come on back to church. And before they went too far and spread the spirit of panic, Moses said, Shh. When, what's, when what's about to be said contradicts what God is doing, you ought to say, shush. No, you, didn't, you didn't get that. See, some of y'all, you allow folk to say anything in your presence. But when what's about to be said contradicts what God is doing, you ought to say, shh. Dr. Penn said the other day when he, when he came to preach for us, he said, he said, they can say whatever they want to say when I'm not around. About Bishop Watts, but I'm telling you now, when I'm around, they understand. 
leave that alone. You, you had to understand, there are times in your life when you ought to tell, hey, not me, not me. I don't need that in my spirit. I don't need that. I don't need that in my spirit. I don't need that in my spirit because you're going to mess my spirit up. You're going to cause me to get fear when I didn't have fear. You're going to make me nervous when I wasn't nervous. I was ready to go. I was all hyped. I was believing God, ready for the surgery. And now that I talk to you, I'm about to cancel my appointment. I got I got to rush. I got to hustle. I got to hustle. Sometimes you have to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. See, um, you you might doc, you know this. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace. Let the Lord fight my battles. See, you, 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 you all, you all ain't, you all ain't old church. So let me try it one more time. You hear it? Hear it be? Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. next week and finish this up. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't, but, but before I walk out this door, before I walk out this door, I need somebody to get excited and just look at somebody else. Just tell them, if I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. Come on, I need you to tell somebody, if I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. It shall be mine. 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 It sh
If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory, victory shall be mine. It shall be mine. It shall be mine. It shall be mine. 
Let me extend an invitation today. Maybe there's somebody who's listening to us in this sanctuary or online. I want to extend an invitation. I want you to know we invite you to become a partner with us here at Shiloh. We thank God for you right now. We know there are many places you could have tuned into if you're online. YouTube and Facebook and uh, Instagram are all full of places you could watch services, but we thank you for joining us. And if you God has sent you our way, we want you to be a partner with us in this ministry. So I extend an invitation. You can come today by letter, by Christian experience, the candidate for baptism. You can become a member. If you're online, call us, email us. Become an I member of this faith. I extend my invitation. I extend my hand to you. I extend the right hand of fellowship to you. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you desire to be a part of this house, please make sure we know. Thank you, Lord. I love each one of you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity before you leave today to give. I want to invite you to, you can give by Cash App, by Givelify. You can give by mail. If you're here in the sanctuary and you want to take an envelope and write your name and give, the ushers will receive those as you leave today. I know we're in a post, well, we're still in the pandemic of post nearing ending. But I want you to know we trust God. I trust God to lead you to give. You know what God has given you. You give back to God the best you can. I love you with the love of the Lord. Let's pray over our gifts. Father, we thank you for our tithes and our offerings. We thank you for the multiple ways you've blessed us. Have your way, God. Cause increase to come for us and allow us to move forward sharing what you've given us so we can share with the world. Grant unto us your favor. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray God give it back to you a hundredfold plus. You hear what I said? A hundredfold plus. That you have more than enough. Here's, here's what more than enough means. More than enough means you paid your bills and you still have money put in savings and some money put in your checking so you can play around and get your new t-shirt from Amazon. You, 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 you had more than enough. You, you weren't so hungry that you had to choose your meal by your wallet. You could choose your meal by what you desired.